worked yesterday might not work today and definitely not for the future. And that's the reason why pharma and life sciences is constantly looking at how to manage costs, cut down the complexity and boost productivity. The ecosystems are getting more and more complex and the dinosaurs that are resistant to change seek extinction. Adoption by business to new technologies is a major issue which is related to change management and these have been some of the lagards in pharma in attributing or moving forward towards technology. And the role of the CIO is moving more from a CIO to a CIBO or a Chief Information Business Officer. And ROI today is no longer return on investment, but return on innovation. So I believe the challenges are luring in further risks than rather simplifying it. It's becoming essential for the CIOs to simplify technology so that you are able to look at these lagards being remote, probably ways of design thinking of go to Gamma. The entire life sciences and the pharma industry was initially very restrictive to the cloud due to the clarity on regulations and how cloud caters to these regulatory aspects. Now, really, compliance related to GXP. So when you talk about GXP's good clinical practice, good laboratory practice, good manufacturing practices, because if you're talking about the PI and SPI data, the personal information and sensitive personal information data. So when you're relating to this, what you're also focusing on or what the GXP focuses is integrity and reproducibility and traceability of the drugs and the data that are being there for manufacturing these drugs. So how does cloud improve compliance is a very important factor that needs to be looked at or pondered. In a typical, in a typical uh, and a traditional scenario, companies who do audit of their sites can show that they are compliant at a particular period or a point of time in which they are audit ready. But with we go moving on to the cloud, you could always be ready at any given point of time, which means you're looking at KPIs or metrics like me, uh, the percentage of audit readiness is going to be reduced. So we need to shift gears and look at how do you achieve this continuous compliance and cloud actually helps you to achieve that. If you refer to cloud partners like Amazon or even if you refer to GCP or Azure, most of them have their own documentations in up to the hypervisor level, which says that you could go back and refer to them and say that there are various certifications already available like the ISO 27001, or you have the uh, HIPAA certification or a SOC certification up to the hypervisor level that you should be able to take and show your compliance and build your compliance for your applications on top of that. So I think that if you're able to take this very hybrid approach, it becomes easier to scale and move towards the cloud, typically which pharma did not do earlier. Probably I will add an analogy to this. Like I would rather refer to Tony Stark and Iron Man. If you look at uh, Tony Stark's the suit, the Iron Man suit, it is all about the arc reactor, which is a fusion powered source. And all these like you know, bad guys who want to replicate it or probably want to steal it. So I'm going to use this analogy over here. In the pharmaceutical industry, what you're talking about is intellectual property rights. So when you're talking about this intellectual property rights, you're talking about molecule studies. You're talking about clinical trial information. You're talking about product pricing. You're talking about marketing information. And if this could probably be breached, right, it leads to commercial losses in terms of the millions of dollars. And also it leads to credibility at stake for the organizations. And that is a reason that is an increased uh, adherence towards security for pharma and biotech organizations. The role of the CI is also moving further towards the CISO kind of role. Organizations, what they could probably do is they could look at a framework, various framework exists, like one of those frameworks would be a NIST based framework, which talks about how do you probably start with identifying, protecting, detecting response and recover from the risks. I would also further recommend to set up a cyber security committee that focuses on identifying and you classify these risks and then you classify the risk on various categories like this could be a financial based risk, technology based risk, process based risk or it could be a human behavior risk because you have people moving and people in the system they could also cause these various risks or cyber risks. Later you need to mitigate each of these risks and embark on adherence to certain models like an ISO 27001 framework or a model which helps you to create your processes and policies in place that help you to be a little more uh, like you know which help you to be on track on your security level also your employees are the first and the last line of defense so when you're talking about that no matter what solution you deploy like a sim solution an mdm solution it becomes very essential to train your workforce and on a continuous basis so you need to start ensuring that people take up some basic security certifications either during induction at the organization or during a yearly period so that you give them access. And also the last and the most important point that I would put on security is to have your metrics being ready like MTT, 
are, like, you know, mean time to response or mean time to detect and have a se separate budget for security. I think with the new age technologies that we are talking about, artificial intelligence, or you move towards blockchain or other emerging technologies, even like 3D printing, right? It's going to fundamentally and drastically create a reshape how the drug manufacturers operate right from the product portfolio and planning period to the development to the consumer marketing. Let's probably assume that uh, before the COVID period, the medical reps used to go meet the doctors. They used to be a time that they had with the doctors, but now it is not feasible to meet the doctors. So they need to look at how do they do remote detailing to the doctors so that they could send information to the doctors about the different products that the organization has at the time that the doctor is ready to consume the information. So it is changing from rather a push-based mechanism to a pull-based mechanism. And I think that is going to be a key, uh, crux that will come in. Also looking at technologies probably like blockchain. So if you're looking at blockchain, how do you look at, uh, though you have your track and trace systems, could I also probably look at uh, using blockchain for securing my uh, drugs that you're creating? So that could be another technology. Or do you look at 3D printing, which could also, again, take uh, and ensure that you could cut down on the supply chain and have your drugs being manufactured probably or being printed even at the chemist schools. So these are ways that we should probably look at and explore, and it's probably an explorative journey on what works that you need to see in the pharmaceutical um, industry that's moving ahead. So when you refer to the Gartner Analytics Assembly model, it has a very uh, typically laid out journey, which says that you start with descriptive analytics, move over to diagnostic, and then you move over to predictive and then prescriptive analytics. And if you look at the, a lot of the organizations, why they don't embark on the journey of analytics is because of the high cost of the infrastructure that is actually required that you need. But with cloud coming in, what happens is you're able to get memory and compute available at, that you can spawn at the speed of light. And also you have various different machine models. Like, you know, you have various data algorithms that are readily available and created through which you will be able to draw, create your quick and ready deployable analytics and insights. Starting from R&D to, you want to move over to uh, R&D to quality, to manufacturing and supply chain, and then sales and marketing, you could have analytics across each of these different areas. Again, what is very important is probably if you look at AWS for that instance, I can even relate to a case study where Merck, at, you know, I was able to read on a case study that Merck had actually taken a lot of the data, like you know, different data points, and they put it on a data lake on AWS using uh, Redshift and using QuickSites, which is going to be the BI tool, they were able to churn out calculations um, in terms of like, you know, coming out with quick responses on what they should be doing next. So I would say instead of building a data warehouse and then going to a data lake, you can start with the data lake concept very easily by using certain cloud uh, models that you have and readily deployable solutions. So that is the advantage. Probably you look at Amazon QuickSight, where you can pay for the number of times you actually use the analytics. And you don't have to pay like a capital expense, which are sometimes very expensive with certain other solutions. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.